part three here and um, gonna re be remaking this part right here this is a 5 8 uh, coarse thread <clears throat> on this and the inside diameter of this hole is um, Eight sixty-five, um, and you can see there's a bushing pressed in there, so we're going to press that out and then get the uh, the diameter of the actual hole. Um, and I don't know uh, if this looks like it to you, but it looks like this is off center uh, from the shaft itself, and I'm guessing that works along with the uh, cam to uh, you know create extra leverage and movement and locking motion. Uh, so. I'm not exactly sure how to measure that and how to reproduce that, but I'll work on that and think about that some. So we've got some, uh, and this is a little uh, under three quarters of an inch thick, 734, and I've got a piece of uh, three quarter inch by two flat bar and I cut it to length a couple of days ago and it's just been soaking in vinegar to remove all the mill scale uh, you know mill scale is very abusive on all your parts or all your tooling and all so when I can have time in advance you know it's just good in it on a small part that you can cut to length and fit in something it's it's pretty you know for 50 cents worth of vinegar and probably good to do that but anyway so we'll get working on this uh, we'll go press that out uh, measure the hole and then start to kind of figure out what we got going here and uh, yeah so we'll go from there all right thanks Press this bushing out, uh, we were able to get a measurement on the inside of the hole and it's not a nominal size, which kind of presents a problem for me because I don't really have a boring bar, or at least not a good one, an indexable one. Um, you know, that's, that's coming up as uh, 110 thousandths, roughly, and this is... 113, 112 thousandths, so like a two thousandths press fit. Um, so I had, I've drilled it out to one inch, and then I had this little boring bar I bought at a flea market, and I've tried to use it a couple times, and it's never really worked well because it's just not rigid enough, and it won't work anyway for this because um, this is not long enough to be able to engage both set screws. So as you can see, I'm going to zoom in there, I've got a, a really cheap, inexpensive fly cutter that uh, I've had for a long time. When I first got the little grizzly mill, I bought a little import three set fly cutter thing and I've never even used any of them. So uh, I took the tool bit out of it and reground it, 
put some back angle on it and uh, ground it to match the bevel you know because those those things are always on there coming in at a bevel for the fly cutting and um, I did a test piece with it earlier uh, a little bit ago and it actually worked pretty well cut cut well and was pretty pleased with it so it, the setting it's on right now will take it from um, 989 which is what the hole should be now to uh, one inch six thousand so we're gonna do that and then just kind of work our way up slowly the only problem with it is it's manually you know it's not really indexable so the only way to know is to move it a little bit and try it so uh, all right here we go I know most of you guys are going to say that's you know way too long to be uh, running that without uh, some kind of support tailstock uh, live center or yeah I hear you I agree with you 
So trying to get to 625,000, it's a little bit under. And as you can see there, it's probably showing up in the camera. 622, 621, somewhere in that range, depending on where you check it. A lot of chatter and vibration out here on the end. So... Twenty-two there. All right, so we'll get the die ran over it, and then we'll do some hand work, uh, finishing up on it, and then uh, go from there. All right, well, got this part finished up. I can't say that I'm in love with it. I had a metric die. That was the only die I had that was big enough for that. <clears throat> and in the die set, it shows, you know, the metric version and the, um, the SAE version in the same die. And I thought, well, maybe it's somehow adjustable or whatever. So I ran it over it and... Um, Yeah, it uh, it it wouldn't work. So I ended up having to go get a 5/8 11 die and run it over it again. And what it is is a couple of spots um, here, here, and here. It cut the tops off the previous threads um, and makes it look kind of funky. So um, you know, you saw the nut thread on there, so it it seems to be working fine. Um, even though I still have one more part to make, which is that spacer plate and getting that to its final dimension and figuring out how I'm going to make those adjustment points. I can still get it all put back together and see if the clamping and the, the cam action and all that's going to work with these new longer parts. And then uh, we'll finish up in part four with uh, figuring out uh, our those adjustment screws and how we're going to uh, get those situated. So. Uh, let me get the camera set up, let me get it back together, and I'll get it set up, and we'll uh, do a little test on it. Oh, and yeah, there was that one issue where uh, I made this too big. So, guess what I'm going to get to make once I get it up and running? My very first part is going to be another bronze spacer, a little bit bigger on the OD and the same on the ID. But just to see if it'll fit and work, I think this will it'll work like it is.
Okay, so we uh, got a little test fit, got the bottom all put back together, the parts, the new parts that we made put on, and uh, uh, you can see it's, it's even with it clamped, you know, it's, it's definitely on there secure. Uh, it's off a little bit to the left, I mean, you know, 20 thousandths or something, just eyeballing it, um, and it's still just a touch high, which, which is good, you know, we can still uh, try to mill it down and take a little more off. Now, getting this dialed in perfectly, you know, is going to be the key. And um, I could keep loosening and tightening the bottom and, and sliding this over to try to take it off and on every time. But I think I want to still try to make a way to adjust it on the fly because it may need adjustment over time. I had a couple of suggestions that uh, said, hey, you know, if you can get it fit once, uh, you know, bolt it permanently and then just leave it. Um, I, it's possible, but I think it'd be a lot of trial and error and back and forth. And I think this getting this adjustment working here would be a great way to get it dialed in and things can change over time so um all right so we'll call this the end of part three and uh we'll um a lot of good suggestions a lot of good ideas appreciate everybody's uh input and uh i'll uh, figure out what solution i'm going to go with and uh, we'll show you that in part four